Hi, my name's Eve Kalinick. I'm a nutritional therapist and author. Today, I'm really excited to be talking to David Atherton, who was the winner of Great British Bake Off and has just published his first book, My First Cookbook. As a therapist, I'm always really interested around people's stories and I'm really fascinated to hear more about what kind of got you into gut health. So let's kick off with that. How did you kind of find gut health or did gut health find you? Yeah, I think I've always been interested in health in general. I am probably better known as a baker, but actually my day job is in health. I've got a master's in public health and I work um, in nutrition to a certain degree um, every day. Uh, and so I'm always looking at kind of the new science for those kind of things. Um, but I remember Gut Health came to me from a Radio 4 programme, one of the food programmes with Professor Tim Spector, and he was talking about it. And to me, it was, was mind-blowing. It was a whole new thing where people were talking about gut health, not just about diet, but actually about how the gut can help all parts of your lifestyle. It sounds like you've come from quite almost a sciencey angle in a way. Um, what's your kind of understanding around the gut and all the microbes that live in our gut? Yeah, I think I get frustrated because I think so many people see microbes as a negative thing. Uh, and obviously there are microbes when in the wrong parts of the body can be lethal. When I was a kid, I remember that my mum was really into germ theory and getting us out in the garden and getting dirty and getting exposure to these things. And then I think there was a time where everything was anti-vaxxed and everyone was scared of any kind of microbes. Uh, and I'm excited now that we've come back to a point where people are realizing that microbes are good as well. And anyway, we can't stop them. Our body is covered in microbes. Uh, and especially the gut, which has a huge amount, and that it's not just about gut health, mm -hmm. that these microbes uh, feed on things and then produce things which actually help our mental health and our diet uh, and, and all kinds of things. Um, and yeah, I think for me, just thinking about that, thinking about oh, these, these things as friends, not as enemies, mm -hmm. is the most important thing to think about with gut health. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a bit of sci-fi when you kind of actually realise mm. that you are more microbe than human. I think that <laughs> sort of takes people's head to get them around that a little bit more. But, um, you know, talking about bacteria and actually just having, I guess, a long-standing relationship, what like we have done for millennia, is things like fermented foods. Mm. And obviously being, you know, a, a wonderful chef, it, you know, it'd be great to understand whether or not you use fermented foods regularly in your recipes or you just enjoy to eat them and kind of the ways in which you use them in your food and cuisine. Yeah, I love fermented foods. Uh, I think in some ways, some cultures are more used to them. Like it's, it's a certain flavor you're used to, isn't it? And my partner comes from Bulgaria and they have a lot of like very sour yogurt and then have a lot of pickles and things. Um, so I've had more exposure and I love that kind of thing. I don't always like to cook with them because I don't want to kill mm -hmm. all the good microbes. Uh, so I often, I love the style of having bowls of pickles and while you're eating to be able to pick up. So I love kimchi, kimchi is one of my favorites. Um, but recently I've been getting into fermented tofu as well, mm. chow, which goes really, after it's oh. been fermented, it goes really soft and cheese-like. So different um, to tempeh then? Yeah, no, you just okay. take normal hard uh, firm tofu and then you dry it and you leave it out and then you pickle it afterwards and it goes, yeah. It goes, it's kind of like a cheese. Wow. It's really good. Okay. And what would you serve that type typically with? I Maybe. spread it on toast. Um, oh, okay. I use it instead of cheese a lot of the time. Uh, but then I also, I just put it in on top of Asian dishes as well. Yeah. Oh, it sounds delicious. I have to check that one out. Um, being a, a star baker, literally, um, you've obviously been well ahead of the sourdough trend that I guess a lot of people have been doing through this lockdown period. Have you got, I know we talked a little bit off camera about this, but I um, want to share it with everyone watching, some tips and tricks for us all and um, how we can perfect our, our sourdough baking? Yes, I just finished writing my next book and it won't be coming out until 2021, but that is going to be sourdough made easy. It's going to have a really super simple tin loaf in there. Well, I'll definitely be checking that because I've had a few dud ferments over the time <laughs> that smell of vinegar and then had to throw them away. So that sounds wonderful. Um, so the, I guess the last question is, um, in your whole gut health journey, are there things that you've picked up along the way, daily rituals or things that you do quite regularly to just help to keep your gut healthy and happy? Yeah, I think I do. But I, I'm also quite a fad person. I tend to go through... Um, fashions and fads with foods a bit. Uh, one of the things I read recently was about um, 
about skipping breakfast. Uh, there's certain microbes in your gut that if they're not fed, they will actually start cleaning the wall of your bowel, which is really, really good. Um, and that works well with Simprove, because after you've had your Simprove shot, you shouldn't eat anything for a while. So I try to do that once a week now, although I'm not a very nice person when I'm hungry. Um, another thing- I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, when I'm hungry, yeah. Another thing is I have, I've done this for a long time now, I've got a huge jar this full of seeds, nuts, dried fruit, cacao mm -hmm. nibs, etc. Every time I make a batch, it has to have at least 25 different types. Um, and for me, just having a couple of spoons of that, I know that there's indigestible starches and all kinds of things that are gonna be help feeding. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the other thing is, I just like to make sure that I'm always having a varied diet. Mm -hmm. So I don't eat a lot of cheese, for example. I just didn't when I was a kid, so it's not something I, I know a lot of people in the UK are obsessed with it, but I do love blue cheese. So I have blue cheese every now and again. I always like to make sure I'm having some kind of uh, live yogurt mm. um, or kef water kefir or something. Uh, so I just think, yeah, variety is the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. And then sleep as well. I think having enough sleep is good for your gut as well. Well, yeah, and actually the research between gut health and sleep is it's, all, it's a bi-directional thing. So the poor sleep affects the health of the microbiome and vice versa, our microbiome. Um, affect our sleep but I think those are some really good ways so I think a lot of people again get caught up in the details but having like those little seed mixes and mixing them up that you're already getting all that diversity and which helps to feed the microbiome so those are really great things yeah and my final thing would be in terms of kind of whole grains so often when people do baking because I obviously love doing baking yeah. there's certain recipes like if you're making uh, a cake and it uses white flour like very highly refined white flour it doesn't work if you're going to suddenly switch that to wholemeal. Mm. But actually, if you just put a sprinkling of wholemeal in or just change 5% of the content to a whole grain, that is still going to be giving a nice regular feed to your microbiome, mm. but probably won't affect the cake. You don't have mm. to have 100% wholemeal rye bread all the time. That's a great tip. Oh. Well, th thank you so much for today. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. I could talk to you for hours on end, even just picking your brains about baking, to be honest. But um, thank you so much. Thank you.